This is video number five for Alan Coyle. So I'm moving on now to the extension. And this is the uh, front conservatory, the extension. There is a vertical crack in the wall here, just in this short height of wall. You can see the vertical crack there. If I zoom in on the next page, you can see that vertical crack. Um, now, the crack has not has not propagated through the wall so it's not visible externally so it's only visible internally i don't think it's been repaired externally i can't see any evidence of repair to me it looks like it you know it's possibly just the result of differential settlement it's a minor crack it's at the minute it's really only an aesthetic problem so I would just fill it and paint over it and I wouldn't worry about it. Now I'm coming back again to uh, floor condensation because there's again there's more floor I spoke about floor condensation before but there's also floor condensation in the utility room and in the bathroom here again this is at the back of the property where the ground level is slightly higher. And I spoke about the reasons why you're having the uh, floor condensation. So this is the bathroom here. So the floor condensation I noticed was in this corner. There was also some in the other corner, but that's a close up there. So you can see how much floor condensation is there. Um, and this, uh, this was also the same in the utility room. So it's, um, you know, it, I'd say it, it probably resulted because the house was vacant for so long, for two months, and the house, the temperature of the house was pretty cold. And then, you know, she had turned on the heat and blasted the heat. But I suspect if you were there for a few days, this would probably not happen again, or not to the same extent in the bathroom or in the utility room. Uh, now, I'm not sure it might happen to more of an extent in the stone building, the rear room of the stone building, because as we did see before, there was fungal growth or mold growth on the floor. So it may be a more prevalent occurrence in that room. Uh, now, this is in the ceiling here in the uh, kitchen. There's a ceiling stain here and here. Now, those stains are both dry. So whatever they were, whether they were a historic, a historic roof leak or, you know, from, you know, from a plumbing pipe or something, they're currently dry. So nothing to worry about. And I, I looked at the attic space overhead. It all looks dry and in very good condition. In the conservatory here, there was another stain, but that one is again dry. So I wouldn't worry about it. Now, I'm going to talk briefly about the drainage. So the drainage was in generally in good condition. Um, there was one small anomaly that I just thought I'd point out. It's a minor problem. It's not really a problem, but it's just bad practice, really. Um, the toilet is here in the extension. And the soil stack or the soil pipe, the four inch soil pipe from the toilet, appears to have been constructed underneath the extension going through all these walls and out to an AJ or an access junction out here. Now in general what you would what you would try and do is you would try and um, you know you would try and get the soil stack you would you would go this direction so that you could get it outside of the building as soon as possible. You wouldn't go underneath the building. You would try and go outside the building, put an access junction here and around here and here. But in this particular instance, they haven't. But it hasn't, you know, I almost didn't mention it because it hasn't caused any problems. And I don't think it's gonna cause any problems because there's an access junction here, so it can be accessed for rotting or cleaning if necessary. There doesn't seem to be any problems related to putting it in. It's just uh, in general, poor practice to do something like that. But um, I wouldn't worry about it. So I lifted the AJs out the front here to um, just check that everything seemed to be working well. And it does. When I flush the toilet, I can see that the water seems to be coming from this pipe underneath the extension into this chamber here. It doesn't go through this one. It does not go through this one. It goes from here and then it flows over to this chamber. And from there, it flows down. 
Now, this here, um, okay, I'll just, I'll just mention, I'll come back to the drainage in a second. I'll just briefly mention the, the heating element in the immersion is not working. So this is the heating element here, that heating element that goes into the tank. That's how it's fixed. That's not working. So it hasn't been working for a long time. Anne said she never fixed it because she never needed it because the central heating will, uh, will heat it up for her enough anyway. Now, I'll come back to the drainage now. So the, as I said before, a new um, wastewater treatment system, a, let's say a mechanical wastewater treatment system or a, a powered wastewater treatment system was installed as part of the extension. Now, this timer here, that timer is the timer for the pump in the wastewater treatment unit, in case you're wondering what that is. That's what that timer is. It's for the, it's for the pump in the wastewater treatment system. And the pump is located in the wastewater treatment system adjacent to it. I'll show you a photograph as I continue on. That's a close-up of the timer there. Now, this is a photograph taken from the house of the field down here. So, this here is the existing septic tank, the historic septic tank. The new system that was put in is over here. Okay, uh, that's the new system. You can just about see that green, um, that green manhole there. And you can see the raised bed percolation filter just behind it. So that's the new system. So according to the plans that were submitted to the council, the septic tank was supposed to have been kept and the solids were supposed to go through the septic tank system and then were supposed to go over to this here for a secondary treatment and tertiary treatment. However, that has not been done on site. What I, from what I can see, from what I can see, uh, and I cannot be 100% sure, but from what I can see, this manhole or this septic tank was abandoned completely and they're using this new treatment system um, this is basically just the full treatment system over here this has been abandoned and this is the new treatment system because from what i can see pipe from here is coming straight down the pipe into this chamber here is coming straight down from the AJ that's up close to around here. It's just out of shot of the photograph. Now, I don't think there's a problem with that. The system appears to be working fine. And uh, Anne did tell me that when she did this upgrade, she, she paid about 7,000 for the upgrade in total to the septic system. Now, I can't confirm that. That's just what she told me. So this is a closer view of the system that was put in. It looks to have been constructed well. Uh, they have done this raised bed area and that's to make sure that uh, you know sometimes what can happen if you don't raise the bed the percolation area can be waterlogged because the water table gets very high so this is uh, oftentimes they put in a raised bed to prevent that from happening so that's been constructed well uh, I can't see any problems with it. As I walk the site, there's no smells. There's no sign of any effluent on the surface. It does appear to be functioning well. Uh, this is a close-up of the, the, the tank here, this green lid here. So it's from Balmoral Group. That's the uh, where the treatment unit is from. So when I lift off the top, in the top chamber here, so there's two lids, basically. This is This is the first lid here. In here is the pump. So again, I showed you the switch for that pump is in the hot press. So I only just showed you. So uh, I'll cover that over again, and then I can take off the secondary lid, and you'll see into the tank itself. This here, I took the lid off this one as well. That's just an access junction, just an inspection chamber, just so that you can see the pipe that's coming into this system. And uh, everything looks fine when I look into it. Again, I'm not doing any specific tests on it. I'm doing some rudimentary tests, but everything looks fine. That's a close-up of the pump. And there is an instruction manual with the pump inside, beside the pump. That's it there. Uh, so I took off the secondary lid and I can see down into the chamber. Everything looks fine. It looks the way it's supposed to look. Um, I can't really uh, inspect the... Um, well, there was no there was no access point to inspect the let's say the the soil polishing filter sometimes there is 
uh, which would be good if there is, but there wasn't in this case, so I couldn't actually have a look at it. But I can't see any problems with it. It appears to be uh, working fine. As again, like, you know, primarily what I'm checking when I go around, because I can't do a full inspection on these things because everything is buried below ground. So when it comes to this kind of a system, there's only a limited amount of checks I can do. And the checks that I perform are, I, um, I, I fill the bath and I let the bath drain, I flush the toilets, I operate everything inside in the building and I make sure that the drainage doesn't get backed up or blocked, that everything gets away. That's the first check I do, it's a fairly simple check. And the other check that I do, which is again, it's generally the first thing the council will do if they come out to inspect the system. They'll come out and they'll just make sure that there's no bad smells, that there's no ponding water, there's no effluent, um, you know, and as long as that looks fine, they probably wouldn't do anything else with it. It's only at a later stage, if you have a problem that's visible, that you might start doing more tests to see what's gone wrong. But from what I can see, everything looks fine so far. Okay, so this is the kitchen sink. So the overflow from the kitchen sink, it's not connected properly. So if, uh, if water overflows into that, it'll just uh, it'll saturate this area here so that 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 needs to be fixed and a close-up on the next page there you can't see it very well from the photograph but there's a large gap around that so if the water overflows you're going to get water coming down so you need to get a plumber in to fit or somebody who's handy with diy uh, might just be able to fix that up um, and never noticed that as a problem because she doesn't really use the sink she puts a basin inside in the sink now, this, another minor plumbing issue, this tap in the bathroom, the hot tap at the bathroom sink, it's loose. So it's just sort of spinning around a little bit. Uh, so it's just a simple case of tightening the bolt underneath the sink and getting a spanner and tightening it up. And again, somebody that's handy with DIY might be able to do that. Um, at the rear of the property, you can see here, that's the boiler um, or the boiler's there and the kerosene tank is here so i just took some photographs of the boiler just to show that it's um well it's not new and um, it's not uh, um it's it, it appears to be from what i can see it appears to be about 20 years old so i just said i'd point it out just to, to show you what age it is and i have a few close-up photographs here you can see there's there's heavy rusting on this part of the um, the flue that's coming up seems to have been replaced at some stage because there's very heavy rusting on this part of the flue, uh, which indicates that there was water getting in at some stage. So I think the flue at the top has been revised. Um, and there's a close up there. So it's about, it seems to be, from what I can see, about 20 years old. Now the stove, the stove is not currently used by the vendor she hasn't used it for years and it's probably not in a condition to be used uh, if i look at the a close-up around the doors someone seems to have removed the seals so you wouldn't be able to use the stove until it was uh, until somebody came out and serviced it replaced the seals these seals were probably removed because old seals contain asbestos because it's a good fire resistant material so that's probably why they were removed so what you would have to do is uh, get some if you wanted to use this you'd have to get somebody out to have a look at it and service it and make sure that it's um, now it is all connected up but it hasn't been used for so long that I wouldn't use it before getting somebody out to service it and okay the last thing I was going to mention is the windows uh, so I went around and checked all the windows are in perfect condition really um, all of the external windows and doors were in very good condition and there's only just some of the uh, some of the internal doors uh, this door here um, the door on the drawing the door is shown slightly the wrong position it's shown here but it's actually up here now these are the old doors of this original building so uh, this door here is actually binding to the frame and it doesn't close properly 
that's number one there so you can see i've just labeled number one number two is this uh, this door here so the door is again it's binding to the frame and it won't close and this frame here i mentioned it before it's partially rotting because of the rising damp and then number three this one here which is in the new building this internal door is um it's binding slightly to the floor you know so if you wanted to get them fixed you'd get a carpenter or a joiner to come out and fix them up but the important windows and doors which are the external ones that are keeping out the moisture they are all in good condition and um, they are all you know they all seem um they've been well maintained okay that's it now just at the end of it i have included extracts from this book uh, which is a very good book about old houses and repair and care of an older house which i suppose the stone building is in your case and if i come back to the summary now before i finish um so i have listed this building as being slightly below average now generally you know uh, stone buildings i list them as slightly below average because they do have you know uh, the problems the common problems that i've gone through uh, but and you know given that it's an old stone building um it's only slightly below average which is one step below average so that's probably about as good as you get for an old stone building um, so it's 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 not too bad and the extension is in good condition so there's not you know not too much to worry about i would have said it was a good buy the only way you might sort of remove um or let's say buy a property that that was not going to have you know um ongoing maintenance issues would be to buy a property that was uh, fully new throughout so i suppose the fact that you've got a stone building that's been renovated you may just have more frequent maintenance to deal with that bit of rising damp that comes through uh, whereas otherwise i suppose if you had um if you had just built a new property those issues mightn't come up uh, for a long time if at all uh, so that's the only downside i suppose to buying an older property that's been renovated but you might have the same problems with any old property uh, that's that's got stone walls that's been renovated so not necessarily a reason not to buy it as long as you're getting it for the right price just to bear in mind that you're going to have a little bit more frequent maintenance on, a, on an older stone building all right that's it and uh, again there's a good bit of information there so if you have any questions at all please please uh, feel free to give me a ring you know talking things through over the phone is very easy so that's no problem if you want to go through anything in further detail just just give me a buzz and the best of luck all right bye